So I've been using Gentoo Linux for about three or four weeks. And I would like to voice some things about how my experience has been using it. Is first of all with the compiling software. Is yes, it is somewhat annoying whenever you need to install something that you will have to compile it. But as long as you're not compiling something like Chromium, it's not going to take that long. And with the processor I have, of it does. I could have 32 jobs, and it takes no time at all to compile much, much software. Like Firefox only takes like 20 minutes. I haven't tried Chrome, but I don't really want to try because I don't use Chrome. Not everything is in the repository, so you will sometimes have to compile them from source, but it's like not that different from, say, how you use Gen2 normally because you have to compile everything from source anyway, except for a few things. And then sometimes when even using the AUR, you'll have to compile packages from source, so, so it's not that different. So, and sometimes you can find software in other repositories like the Guru repository, the Guru repository, which is similar to the AUR for the AUR, but for Gentoo, it has a bunch of user submitted e-builds. And then if that isn't sufficient, you can also add other repositories. The one issue with adding other repositories is that it takes a really long time to merge them. I'm not sure if I did something wrong, but sometimes they can easily take like five minutes just to find the software and then compile that. And one time when updating, it took like five minutes for like 20 packages. So those 100 minutes of just waiting for the packages to be found and then it compiling and that took forever. The worst part about it was when I did a dep clean, it deleted all those packages so it just wasted a lot of time. Realistically, if you can't be bothered with compiling software, you could also always use flat packs since is you don't have to deal with any compiling and so they usually just work perfectly fine out of the box other than theming. But that's a fix that is easy to solve. It's another thing is annoying is when dealing with custom kernel compilation is I always seem to mess it up or whatever where I go and as I go and I forget a step and then I don't create the, the kernel properly and then it doesn't boot properly and at one point one module was even loading and I had no idea why and then I just re-emerged like the thing that I thought would fix it and it would error out I'm not sure why is breaking, but then I re-emerged packages that require that dependency and it fixed it. So, interesting. Another annoying thing is when dealing with the use flags is there's no warnings about setting global use flags. Like, it, you should be warned about, because if you have too many global use flags, you'll end up tangling all your software use flags and then things will be like, I depend on this, I don't depend on that, or whatever, and you're like, or you get a dependency loop and then it's like, well, this depends on that, it depends on this, depends on another thing, and then it depends on the original thing, and then you're like, you can't compile them in any order because they all depend on each other in a very particular order. And then some packages will get masked because you need to set their use flags, because some use flags disable other use flags. And you're like, just stop. And so it should say, there should be a warning about that. And be like, hey, set a few global use flags like the stuff that you're definitely going to use and then everything else should be a use flag only for a piece of software. It's, no one tells you that and it would just be very helpful if on the Gentoo handbook there's an easy way of saying hey be very lean with using use flags and only use them on things that you know absolutely that you're going to need or use and that you can do them by package this way or whatever. But other than like kernel things and compiling software, Gen 2 has been remarkably stable. Like, nothing has broken at all. Nothing has gone wrong, other than when I miss a few steps in the kernel, but that's my fault, which user error, I like to get rid of from stability. You don't have to worry, worry about expiring SSL keys or other things. The steps are very clear. If you actually read them, like, they explain so much, like, what an IP address is, which I'm like, if you don't know what an IP address is, why are you installing Gen 2? But who knows? Is also people forget that Gen 2 is by default a stable 
release distro is it uses and more more of the technical users end up using the testing phase but you can use the stable i would recommend that if you are setting up a laptop that you should probably just stay on the stable and use gen 2 because you'll be able to make the make linux so minimal that it'll run really fast on the machine and therefore give you more battery life overall those are some things on gen 2 and what my experience has been i couldn't think of that many questions or responses so i'd like if you have any questions about using gen 2 could you put them in the comments below and i'll either if i get enough of them i'll might make another video on them or or i'll probably still make another video on them even if i respond to them in the comments because it's much easier it'll be much easier to find the video if it's uh, find the content is in video form rather than in just the comments down below but if you enjoyed the video like like and subscribe comment down what any questions you have about gen 2 and have a nice day minix out